Welcome to the lesson 9 of Open Saba. In the previous lesson, we saw how we can use view inherence to modify the user interface and define different views according to the requirements of our application. You can see more about this lesson in this link. Through all the course, in this point, you have converted your domain model into a fully functional web application. Our application is already quite useful, but there are still many improvements that we can make. So, let's transform this application into some more serious, and in the time we can learn some interesting things about OpenSaba. So, let's start learning some basic Java concepts like properties. In order to understand some concepts in this lesson, you have to know how properties work in Java. The standard way to define a property in Java is this. To illustrate some of these examples, I will create here a new class, temporal class, named properties. Remember that this class is only for, for these examples. So, to define a property in a standard way, you need to add here a field, in this case quantity, and you need to write uh, the getter and setter methods, or you can make OpenSaba work for you. You need to get in this position, press Ctrl-1, click on Create, Getter and Setter for this field, OK, and now you have here the Getter method for quantity and the Setter method for this field. This is based on the idea that we never show access the state of an object directly, but always calling its methods. This is very useful because you can change the implementation of a property without affecting the code that uses it. Moreover, all tools, frameworks and libraries from the Java ecosystem rely on this convention, so we should use this convention always. So, we can say that a property in Java is a getter method like get quantity method in the example and a setter method like set quantity only if the property is modifiable in fact the field in this case is not needed the problem of this approach is that is very verbose a lot of our code on our classes are getters and setters that really do not add value and make a lot of noise to solve this problem we can use a library that is named Lombok with Lombok, we can define um, the above quantity property in this way. So, we will reuse here this class, so clean the code. And now we will define using the Lombok library. Declare the field. And now use the annotations getter and setter. And that's it. We have done here the same that the example before, now using Lombok library, and you have a better clean code. The getter and setter annotations generate the getter and setter in the compiled code. So when we access the property, we have to use them in this way. So to illustrate this example, I will create here a new class and name it incidents, remember that this class are temporal only for this example, not for all the, the lesson course. And here I will make a new method named private boil method. And inside this method I will uh, instance um, an object from properties and name it this object. And now we can 
um, access to the methods of properties through this object in this way. Um, if we click, if we have here um, a point, we can see here get quantity from the getter method and set quantity for the setter method. We can uh, use here a get quantity so we can have the field value and we can use here set quantity if we want uh, for example to add a value to our field and that's it so we can see here we can access from um, an outside class to all the methods that are listed, listed in properties through this method. We can declare the getter and setter annotations at class level so all the fields have getter and setter automatically and of course you can write your own setter and getter if you want to use your own logic. Let's see. For this example, I will create a third temporary class named ISU. Remember that these classes are for the example of this lesson. They not for part from all the course. So here I will declare two fields, one for um, number, another from description. Now we can add here at class level the getter and setter annotations because we want to add for number and description the automatic getter and setter. And if we want to establish a um, personalized logic, we can create our own getter or setter method. For example, I will create here a new getter for description. Here we can add some logic for example so um, we can see here that we have our fields and we have getter and setter to automatically, uh, automatically create all getter and setter for number and description but we have here defined a new getter for description, a personalized getter. In this case Lombok library generate for us get number, set number and set description while get description is replaced by the one that we have right. So all methods that we can create will replace the Lombok methods. Note that we never should use the data annotation of Lombok because it produces infinite recursive loops when we have reciprocal reference, something that is very useful in business applications. In this lesson, we have learned some common ways to add business logic to our entities. We saw how the Lombok library works how to define getters and setters manually in order to establish custom logic for our application. Who was this lesson? Remember to leave your comments, like this video and subscribe to our channel for future content. See you soon!